G'day team, welcome back to the channel. My name's Tony, this is the Mighty Overlander, and today we're in the Mighty Overlander shed, and that means it's gear review time. And for the first gear review that I'm shooting in the shed, I thought I'd do a quick showcase on the Nomad PDU V5. This is the 12 volt auxiliary power system that I've been using in the back of the rig for the last 12 months. And whilst it is an older system in the Nomad lineup, it will give you a really good indication of whether or not these portable power systems are suitable for your Jimny or other micro overlander setup. So go get yourself a nice cold one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll get stuck into this gear review. All right team, when it comes to gear reviews on the channel, I've got three simple rules. First being is that it needs to be pretty good gear in the first place, I don't wanna waste my time or yours trying to showcase crap gear. The second one is it obviously needs to be four drive, camping or fishing related, that's what the channel's about. And the third rule is that I need to use it for at least three to six months, preferably longer, to make sure that it can actually handle the rugged lifestyle that I throw at it. Now, any disclaimers that need to be made, I'll do here, but today I'm not actually sponsored by Nomad or anything like that. All right, so what we'll do first is we'll talk about some of the specifications of the unit. I'll go over some of the features and then I'll also go over my experiences and a couple of hints and tricks that I've learned by using this system over the last 12 months. All right, let's get stuck in. So the Nomad PDU is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium ion power supply with a full suite of inputs and outputs here at the top. So first off, dimensions. This is basically a 11 kilo system, which is absolutely phenomenal considering that the equivalent in the same battery capacity for an AGM system is about 50 kilos. So literally a fifth of the weight there. It's only about 31-ish centimetres across and about the same in height and barely nine centimetres in depth. So a very compact little system. And that's really important, especially if you're a Jimny owner or the other kind of like micro overlander owners out there. Really good for saving on that space. Now, when it comes down to your charging and output options, these are denoted by the red and green sections. And then this yellow section is all of your uh, controls and also kind of like data outputs like voltage and amperage and all that kind of stuff. Right, our team, let's have a look at the charging options available for the Nomad PDU V5. Now, this, like I said before, is designated by the red square here. And it is really important that you only ever stick to the red square because if you try and charge it from the output options, you can actually do some damage to the unit. And the two options that you've got for charging are essentially regulated or unregulated. Now the difference between those two are regulated assumes that you're using an external regulator and unregulated uses the internal regulator. So if you, for example, have raw solar panel cells on the top of your vehicle without a controller in between, you can use the term terminals here at a charging rate of 10 amp and then it uses the internal MPPT controller of the unit itself. However, for example, if you've got say a DC-DC charger, a solar panel system with its own MPPT controller, or you're using the 240 to 12 volt regulator here from charging it at home, then you can use the Anderson plug at a charging rate of 25 amp and that, is, like I said, assumes that you've got that external regulator. So when it comes down to output options, that's designated by the green section, and that's obviously what you're gonna be using for all of the accessories that you wanna power up. You've got two 12 volt SIGA plug type outlets, an angle plug type outlet, then you've also got a dual USB with a one amp and 2.4 amp system. You've got two 2.1 jacks, and you've also got the larger Anderson plug outlet as well. Personally, what I use is I'll be basically using the USB ones quite a lot for charging things like GoPros and everything like that. I'll use the SIGA plug type outlets for using my uh, fridge, or I use the Anderson plug outlet for the travel oven. So let's move on now to this yellow square here. And the yellow system is basically your controls and also all of your data outputs. And this will tell you things like your current capacity, your voltage, so on and so forth. Now the top switch is going to be just the monitoring system off. And this is useful if, for example, the car's quite dark at night and you don't want the red and green kind of glowing lights coming from the back of the vehicle. It doesn't really phase me too much because of the way I've got it set it up, it's tucked in behind the fridge. Um, then you've got your master isolator and that's obviously going to turn off the entire unit, a bit of a kill switch. Now the other things that you've got here in the yellow section are going to be your battery level capacity and voltmeter on this side and then you've got your AM meter on the other. Now your battery capacity is pretty much straightforward. This is a 100 amp hour lithium ion battery and it has an 80% depth of discharge. Now what that basically means is that you're able to use about 80% of the total capacity of this unit and I'll 
give you a little hint later on about how to kind of reach a little bit deeper into that 80% as well, especially with your fridge. Um, and then you've also got your voltmeter and the voltmeter gives you what your current voltage of the battery system is. As time goes on and you're drawing more from it, that voltage will lower a fair bit. Now, the other one here is your ammeter or your current output. So depending on how many accessories you've got plugged into the system will give you an idea of how much current you're drawing. And that will also give you a bit of an idea of how long of the battery you've got left to go. So for example, I use say my Coolite 50 fridge and that will draw about three to three and a half amp when the compressor's running. And that gives me a bit of an indication of, all right, you know, at a full battery, 100 amp hour, I can kind of do the maths, I'll get a couple of days out of that, you beauty. If I look over and it's say running at five or even six amp and it's only the fridge running, then I go, oh, oh hang on, I don't have it in eco mode. And then I can quickly do, change the settings on the fridge to make sure I'm getting the maximum life out of the battery itself. So look, that's the major features of the unit itself. Like I said, it's a really good compact unit. It slots perfectly into the back of the chimney. As you can see here in the photo that I'll put up, that I've got a nice little bracket there that it sits in the back of, and it also plugs perfectly with the uh, DC-DC charger into that um, little outlet in the back of the vehicle. But in regards to my experiences with this so far, so I haven't had any major issues with the Nomad PDU. I did have one of the tw uh, 240 volt to 12 volt um, charges die on me and that was replaced by uh, Wayne and the team at Nomad with no charge. So thanks very much to Nomad for that. Um, you know, look, these things happen. Unfortunately, electronics, especially like the, the more sensitive stuff can be susceptible to that kind of thing. And I, I think I just got a dud one. But apart Apart from that though, I haven't had any other issues. It, I took this all the way across the gun barrel um, and no issues there, kept my fridge running the whole time. And generally speaking, it sits in the back of the vehicle on trickle charge with the five amp DC-DC charger all the time. However, I've got a little tip for you in regards to using your DC-DC chargers. So stand by for two seconds and I'll quickly show you. All right, Tim, so when you're using your DC-DC chargers, I've got this one here as well, which is a 10 amp DC-DC charger. And the reason why I've got that one is that, for example, if I'm using my travel oven, then I will plug this one in to maintain the charge of the Nomad PD whilst I'm on my way out. And that means that I can have my travel oven essentially running in the back of the car whilst the car's running, constantly charging it and keeping this bad boy topped up. But when I get to my place and I want to stay, say for example, stay there for a bit longer and I don't really want to have to drag out my solar panel set and I notice that the voltage is getting a little bit low, here's a little hint in regards to your DC-DC chargers. So one thing you can do is actually plug the DC-DC charger into the output and use the DC-DC charger to run your fridge. So for those of you that know with your fridges, they've actually got a volt, like a minimum voltage setting on them. So once the actual unit draws down to say 11.5 volts or so, they will shut off. And not the unit, not the, the battery, but the actual fridge. Now the way to get around that, because you may still have about 50% of your battery sitting there, but the voltage level has just dropped enough that it will actually turn off the fridge. What you can do is you can plug your DC-DC charger into this and then plug your fridge into the DC-DC charger. And what that basically does is that this, for example, one has a nine volt to 36 volt input and the output is gonna be 12.6 amps, 12.6 uh, amps, 12.6 volt at 10 amp. So it essentially tricks the fridge into thinking that there's 12.6 volts available and 10 amps to draw from, but there may only be say 11.5. One thing to keep an eye on though, if you are going to do this, is your capacity gauge here. So if you're drawing down into that 80% depth of discharge, just make sure you don't go into the red, okay? This might get you another 12 to 24 hours out of the battery without having to charge it, um, but you know, use it in a pinch. Probably don't use it if you've already got your solar panel set up and everything like that, but you know, it is a good way to draw further into that depth of discharge when you've got a piece of kit that will shut itself off depending on its voltage settings on that piece of kit itself. All right, team, look, that's it for me today. Um, like I said, a pretty good piece of kit. I've been using this one for quite a while, and hopefully this helped you out in regards to portable kind of systems and whether or not they are gonna be suitable for you and your micro overlander setup. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and uh, the next video you will see will be 
Um, whoa, what am I going to do? Oh, we're going to be doing the Moondyne Joe episode um, up in the Avon Valley. So that should be pretty exciting and a little bit of history for you. All right, team, thanks very much, and I'll catch you next time.